If you're like me, you don't want the likes of Amazon, Google or Facebook knowing all of your online life and then spouting this back to you in the form of targeted products, targeted ads or worse still, friend suggestions. I've got enough friends. Really? Whilst Firefox may not have the lead in the browser market anymore and hasn't for quite some time, it does have a few tricks up its sleeve that really make it a great desktop browser, at least for me. Today, I want to talk to you about multi-account containers within Firefox and how these may just be your greatest weapon against big tech's onslaught of data harvesting. Let's take a look. With just 9.18% desktop browser market share as of January 2022, according to StacksCounter.com, Firefox is far less popular than it used to be. In fact, it's now actually behind Apple's Safari and Microsoft's Edge. Meanwhile, Google Chrome has a mind-numbing 65.38% of a browser market share, and that's reaching scary levels of being close to Internet Explorer's dominance back in the late 90s. Oof, I remember those days. However, with Mozilla waving the flag of privacy as their top priority, and the fact that they're not tied to a tech giant like Google, Microsoft, or even Apple, and in much the same way as Signal, the private messaging app is, Mozilla is backed by a non-profit organisation, which means that they don't have shareholders to answer to. So, as well as being privacy focused, Mozilla does bring a lot to Firefox in terms of undervalued features. Going back to the data harvesting I was talking about at the start of the video, the sad reality of modern browsing is that all of this tracking is possible through cross-site trackers and cookies. No, not, not those. I'll eat those later. But, let me ask you a question. If you could separate out your Google activities and your Amazon window shopping sessions from your day-to-day -day browsing, the things that you don't really want Google and Amazon to know about, or just watching YouTube videos where you don't want the rest of your browsing history to influence your videos. I certainly don't. That's where multi-account containers come along. So let's take a look and I'll give you a quick demo. Okay, so we have a lovely fresh copy of Firefox. Uh, now I'm running Mac OS uh, Monterey at the moment, but this will work on any platform. Uh, in fact, I've used this on Windows and on Linux many times. Now, when you first start up Firefox, if you haven't before, you are going to see their privacy notice. Um, something I mentioned earlier, Mozilla do have a really good stance on privacy, but it's always worth reading through to make sure that you're happy with what they're collecting and how they're going to use it, because each have our own uh, preferences for these things. Now, to make things easier, I've already loaded up the extension page. So we're going to go in here. I'll put a link to the extension in the description to the video, but we click Add to Firefox and it's going to give us a standard permissions uh, check. Now, you might be freaking out at this point thinking, oh no, it's going to access all my browsing data, all my websites. Well, it kind of has to do that in order to load the containers and to determine you know, what URLs are going to get loaded into each container. Um, so don't worry about that. You can learn more if you are concerned. So we click Add, and we're going to get started. So here we go. Now we've now got the icon, which uh, kind of looks like a shape shorter. Shape shorter? That's kind of Sean Connery's way of saying it, isn't it? Shape shorter. Shape sorter. And we're going to get started with containers. Now, I'll give Mozilla some real credit. They've made this setup really simple to understand. So here we go. Okay. Put containers to work for you. Color coding and separate container tabs. Now, I've only really focused on the privacy aspect of this so far. But we are going to be looking at some really neat little tricks with containers as well. I like that. Okay. And keep going through. Okay. Now, start synchronizing containers. So if you are signed in with a Firefox account, you can sync your containers across all your signed in Firefox instances, which is fantastic. But in our case, we're not going to use a Firefox account. So we'll choose not now. Now, it's asking if we want to integrate with Mozilla VPN. Now, I'm not going to focus at all on Mozilla VPN in this video, uh, mostly because I haven't done enough research yet on how it works and the security of it. But from the little that I have seen so far, it allows you to route specific containers through specific VPN endpoints with Fire, uh, Mozilla VPN. Uh, this looks really cool. I do plan to have a look at this in more detail, and you know, if I can, I'll bring you a video on it. But we're going to choose not now. Okay. So, again, maybe being cheeky here, 
So we're going to say no. Okay. So by default, we get four containers, personal, work, banking, and shopping. And that's quite a good mix. Now, what we can do is, first of all, we can go and just look at each container. So let's have a look at our work one. And we can open a new tab in this container. And let's do that. So we've now got a new work tab. And you'll see the top of the tab is color-coded. And in the address bar, we get our name of our container and a little icon you can set so we're going to start with our uh, with a new container we're going to build a new container for youtube so to do this we go here and we're going to manage containers and we're going to choose new container now i'm going to call this youtube and we're going to choose red and i'm going to choose let's see well we're watching something so let's have these glasses and press ok so we're now in the settings of the container now. What you can't do, you can say limited designated sites, but what you can't do at the creation of a container, which is really frustrating, is add a site list. And there's a, you have to add your site sort of manually. So we'll do that now. So we're going to come out of here. So we're now back at our container list. So what we're going to do is come in, click here, and we've launched a new container for YouTube. Now, we're now going to go to YouTube. Oh, look at that. And we're here. Now, it's asking me to sign in. I'm not going to sign into my Google account, but I am going to agree to the cookies. And we've got some uh, a fine choice of videos here. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the container menu and choose Always Open with Site in YouTube. Now... There we go, we get a little notification that, that's happened. Now, I'm going to open up a new tab just by itself because there's one additional thing you kind of need to do. So, I'm going to click on YouTube again and you'll see we get a prompt here to say, open this container in your assigned container. You asked Firefox to always open YouTube for this site and we've got our URL here. Now, we want to click remember my decision for this site and we want to choose open in YouTube container. Now, I got tripped up by this where it says open in container. What that means is open this in the current container, even if that is effectively the default no container container, if that makes sense. So we're going to choose open in YouTube container. And you'll see we get another YouTube. Lovely. So the next thing we need to do is, because what we don't want to be able to do is browse to other sites within our secure little enclave uh, that is our YouTube container, because that's not going to help us. That's going to leave more footprints for YouTube. So we need to limit the YouTube container so that it can only access the sites that you've said should open in this container. So we're going to manage containers. We're going to YouTube and we turn this on. Limit to designated site. And we're going to manage site list. And you'll see we've now got youtube.com in there. So we're going to come out. And now that's set, what I'm going to do is in this tab is I'm going to go to, well, let's see, let's go to the Crosswise website, shall we? And you'll see that we're taken to the Crosswise site. But you'll notice this is opened in the default container. Firefox has not allowed us to open that link inside of our YouTube container, which is fantastic. And in fact, let's find a video that we want to watch. Um, okay. And we want to pause, pause that because we don't want a copyright strike, but um, we're going to click this link and you'll see, again, this takes us out. I have not watched this film. I need to. But the point is, it's taken us across to Twitter. And probably more importantly, it's not done so in this same tab. So we'll close that one down and close that down. And we'll go back to this lovely little, little website here. And that's how we've got our containers. Now, what we can do as well is we can sort our tabs by containers. And you'll see that shifts everything across. So we'll always start with the sort of no container and then in the order that we're on this list, which is really cool. Now, let's say that we are, um, let's say that we've got a personal tab up here and we're doing a bit of, um, let's see, we're watching Twitch, okay? 
And I'm, uh, you'll notice by very close, I'm using DuckDuckGo. So we're doing a little bit of browsing. We don't want anyone to see what we're looking at. I joke about the boss coming in, but of course, you know, you should be respectful to your employer's time. I, I really do believe that. I also believe that there's a balance, but we'll come to that in another episode. So, but let's say, for example, you're searching for your significant other's birthday present. Well, you might not want them to see it. So let's uh, hide this. And we're going to choose hide this container. Now, that hides it. Now, if we need to get back to the container, now, the mistake I made is you can actually just click on the new personal tab. But if you click here, you can then show this container. Now, doing it the first way will um, launch a new container tab. Okay? So, that's very, very handy. I really like multi-account containers. I think they're wonderful things. Now, one of the other uses for these is if you think about them in the way they work, they are containers. Let's say that you've got multiple accounts for a service. A great example is if you are in the IT department of a business and you have your uh, sort of general day-to-day -day Office 365 account, your work email, your calendar, all of that stuff. And then you've got your admin account. Now, you should have a separate admin account to your main account. If your company is not doing this, you need to go and slap them on the wrist. It's uh, part of the data security requirements for, um, well, pretty much for everything, actually. Cyber Essentials really does require this if you're a UK company. Uh, and I would imagine the NIST requirements do as well. I need to really read up on this. But the point is, because these are separate containers... You can have one container for your admin duties, one container for day-to-day, -day, or indeed just be logged in day-to-day -day on the uh, normal container. But because all of that authentication cookies, all of the sessions are linked with the container in question, you can have a container that's logged into your admin duty account and then just open a tab for that. Now, obviously, with something like Microsoft 365, you're not going to be able to say always open these URLs in a specific, specific container because they're the same URL. You might be able to do that with I think like admin.office.com, but I've had some real mm, issues doing that, so you might need to do that manually. Now, one thing I will mention, I'm sure a lot of us want to create a Facebook container, and for good reason. Well, Mozilla suggests you don't do this. In fact, the reason is, what we've got is an actual Facebook container. They thought of this, and the reason they suggest this is because it also includes extra rules for things like Instagram and other uh, Facebook or Meta companies. So they recommend you use this instead of creating your own Facebook container, and that'd be my recommendation as well. So we've had a good look at multi-account containers. I think they're one of the best underrated features in Firefox. I strongly rec recommend you look at them. They may well be your solution to keeping a little bit more privacy and stopping uh, more cross-site tracking activity. So I well, I hope that was useful. I really like multi-account containers, and I think they're such a great addition to Firefox. Do you have any use cases for multi-account containers? Have you done things slightly differently with your setup? Or do you have some top tips for how to isolate your browsing? I know a lot of people prefer just using separate browsers. Leave a comment down below if you do have any examples or just want to ask some questions. Always happy to answer things. You can also check out crosswires.net for our blog and newsletter and our podcast. And, of course, like the video if you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching.